What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Sora. I am back with another uh, sort of compilatory guide video. And in this video, we are covering this Chad right here, Divine Grace. If you are lucky enough to have him, I would 100% recommend building him. He is an epic or four star unit, whatever you want to call it. And he is stronger than a lot of legendary units, uh, a lot of lower tier legendary units. Uh, I would honestly kind of consider him a uh, a low tier legendary unit in my opinion and uh today we're going to go over you know what skills i would recommend from his skill tree uh what weapons i would recommend and then like his trinket choices and then obviously his tarot choices as well uh as always if you like this sort of content if you like me in general please consider leaving a like and a sub so that way you know i can continue making these kind of videos for you before i start the video i want to give a special shout out to my good friends uh david and geek uh they kind of helped me put this together uh i had a, a extremely rough idea of what i wanted uh to put on this infograph uh unfortunately i am not much of a graphic designer or art artist at all really so i told them what i wanted i and they made this for me and so i thank them so much uh for this um basically i again like most of my guide videos i am going to front load the information on a nice little infograph like this for you guys so that way for people who just want to quick in and out to see uh what skills they should get what weapons trinkets and turrets uh it's right here um you will see that uh this is the skill tree picks that I picked. Uh, these are my equip skills that I equip on Divine Grace. Um, if you see an ability below, that means sometimes I swap this one for this one or vice versa, depending on the situation, right? Uh, these are my weapon recommendations, Trinket and Tarot. Um, but yeah, let's get into, uh, you know, Divine Grace, right? So Divine Grace is a watcher role range DPS. Uh, in my opinion, he specializes in taking out really dangerous single targets. He belongs to the Papal States and Discipline Faction, and his trait is called Crossbow of Blessing. Basically how Crossbow of Blessing works is you'll gain, uh, he gains a percentage of physical attack, right? Depending on how many copies you have of Divine Grace. But on top of that, if he has three or more buffs, it further increases his damage. Now at the beginning of the game, you might not have a lot of buffer units and this might be a hard passive to upkeep. However, later on in the game, as you develop your characters, develop your team, whatnot, you will gain more units that, uh, provide buffs and this will pretty much be an ability that he will have active at 100 percent of time or at least most of the time for example if you have gloria or if you manage to pull ada or are pulling for ada they would be great teammates for divine grace and yeah let's get right into his skill tree okay before i dive into the skill tree recommendations i want to point out this ability right here knockback shot this is one of, this is the ability that he starts with and it is one of the strongest starting abilities that i have witnessed on a unit basically what it does is works a lot like maisha's and rahia's knockback where they knock people back two tiles except this is a ranged ability that is amazing uh, if you play the game, you know how OP knockback is because you can knock, uh, you know, highly dangerous targets off the map with knockback, um, basically making them useless, intimidating for nothing. Um, and this works really well with Divine Grace because not only does he can knock them back, but because he is a ranged unit, he can also use this ability to reposition, right? At RK1, I recommend getting uh, the ability to his right, which is Covering Shot. Um, this is a really good ability. If you have Ada, you would know kind of how this works. Basically, um, you activate it, and uh, if Divine Grace is within an enemy within four tiles, he will provide a follow-up attack uh, to that enemy um, up to two times per round. So basically how it works is, let's say you have Divine Grace and then you have Maisha. Uh, Divine Grace activates this and then Divi uh, and then Maisha hits that target. As long as that target's within four tiles of Divine Grace, Divine Grace will follow up Maisha's attack with a shot of his own. That's one time. And then let's say you have another ally like Gloria, for example, come up and attack the same target. He will shoot him, uh, that target, once again. This is a great ability 
for taking out a single target that you want really quickly. At RK3, I kind of differ from some other guides, but I would actually recommend getting both of these abilities right here, Light of Sanctuary and the Protected. Uh, a lot of guides say just to get this one, but I would say if you plan, if you use Divine Grace and you like him, his kit a lot, and which I do and I use him almost everywhere, uh, I would actually get both here. Now, what the Protected does is the character gains 15% bonus attack and 30% bonus de defense while not affected by any debuff and affected by at least 3 buffs. So, again, you have to have 3 buffs on him. You need that anyways to proc his ta uh, trait so he can get increased damage. But, although this is a very conditional, uh, later on you'll have a handful of buffers and healers with the Empress turret uh, that converts debuffs into buffs. So this will be a lot easy to proc. Um, and then his ability on the right is called Light of Sanctuary. It's a heal ability. If the target is unharmed, the effect changes to where he grants a damage uh, and magic defense buff for two turns. This works really well as like an emergency heal and it can also be used to buff, you know, it can be used to buff, um, provide uh, literally uh, <laughs> himself with a buff too as well. So it is a really good ability to pick up. At RK5, I would recommend getting strength activation. Basically how it works is increase the healing that he receives by 10%, which isn't a whole lot. But what's important here is when he receives the healing, he actually gains a damage to buff right here, right? Increases damage by 20%. Remember, upkeeping buffs on Div Divine Grace is super important. And this pairs really well with his Light of Sanctuary ability. So, uh, you know, you heal him, he gains that uh, damage to buff. Uh, and, you know, obviously his healing is increased too as well. So these two abilities pair really well. And, um, and uh, getting that damage to buff is super, super, super strong on him. Because, again, he needs three buffs to uh, upkeep his damage, right? So at RK7 is where I am going to differ from a lot of different guides. A lot of guides uh, actually recommend taking Storm Sniping. And the reason why I feel like you shouldn't pick up Storm Sniping, again, I think RK7 is a personal preference thing, but I'll give you guys my reasoning on why Storm Sniping, I think, in my opinion, is not that good. Because it's really hard to use. First, there's a restriction on weapons. For example, if you're using a crossbow, you cannot use, it does not pair with Storm Sniping. You have to use like uh, an actual bow. Um, this skill becomes pretty much unusable without uh, without a bow. And on top of that, it it's cost a four whopping energy to use. That's a lot of energy. And in my opinion, a lot of the times, you're gonna rather wanna use two knockback shots. Knockback shots is two energies, right? For the, So for the cost of two knockback shots, you're gonna use a storm sniping. In my opinion, in a lot, a lot, a lot of cases, you're going to want to use the two knockback shots. It's better to have two knockback shots than just one for one storm sniping, in my opinion. And so uh, I would recommend picking up crit command here. Uh, increases crit by 20% for all other allies. Remember, it is other allies. It is not a self buff, but it still provides really good utility, in my opinion. At RK9, um, I think both options are fine here. The left one, uh, Fatal Attack, buffs his crit damage. The right one buffs his crit rate. In my opinion, I think you should pick up the one on the left, the one that buffs up his crit damage. This increases his damage even further. I'm thinking late game here because later on in the game, we're going to have units that buff crit rate. And you're going to want more... Uh, you're going to get more damage by having more crit damage uh, than crit rate if you have units that buff your crit rate already. So, that's why uh, I'm thinking for future case uses, uh, RK9, pick up Fatal Attack. So, for as far as his weapon choices go, anything that buffs his physical attack will work on him. However, there are three choices that really stand out to me. Number one would be Steel Crossbow. It is an easily accessible weapon. Uh, about, I'm not going to say everyone, but most people will have this weapon by now. And uh, this would be a good weapon on him, right? 
The second weapon I would recommend is Meteor Line, which isn't a crossbow, by the way. So if you wanted to pick up Storm Sniping instead of uh, uh, RK7, you can use this weapon for him. It's really strong on him. And then the third weapon, um, and the weapon that I personally use on him, is the Melee Mega Crossbow. It does nerf his range by one. Uh, by a little bit right but it does his damage potential is, is is crazy with this weapon in my opinion but again anything with that increases his physical attack will work just fine okay for trinkets i would recommend evergreen pendant uh this pendant basically gives him a random buff when he receives healing stacks really well with strength activation right um at rk5 uh, when you heal, remember at RK5, when you pick up strength activation, if he heals himself or he receives healing, he gains a buff, right? But now on top of that, he has a trinket. If you have this pendant, he gets a trinket. He gets a second buff on top of that. So that's two buffs right there. You just need one more to upkeep his passive now at this point. Um, so I think this would be a really good trinket on him. If you have really good buffers or you have a lot of buffers on your team and you don't really need this trinket, uh, uh, precise lens. Uh, which buffs his physical attack uh, and he does more damage when he's on the high ground would be a good trinket for him as far as terror choices i would recommend justice uh as one of them um gives him an increase in crit percentage right and especially if you can gain that fourth exclusive effect you know increases his, you know increases even more so justice will be a really good it's a really good um in my justice in general it's just a really good tarot for any physical attack dps unit um so uh, of course divine grace would benefit from this the second tarot choice i would recommend for him is higher fence law uh basically what this does is uh i believe he gains like a 20 percent damage reduction from aoe skills this increases his survivability but if you are able to gain roll that fourth exclusive effect on that fourth stat line right it increases his damage onto single targets, which that's what he's here for. He is here to uh, he is here to uh, destroy single targets, right? Do single target damage, and it increases his healing as well on a single target, which pairs really well with his um, his uh, his RK3 ability. So not only does his RK3 ability or his healing potential gets buffed, but he also does increase damage on a single target. So both these turrets would work great on uh, Divine Grace. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or concerns, leave them in the comments down below. Would love to hear from you guys. Uh, and until next time, peace out. Bye bye.